can you solve this geometry challenge? Here's the question. So given this semicircle, let's draw one chord be equal to 16 units. And let's draw a perpendicular segment to 16, which is equivalent to 21 units. Now this segment measures 10 units. Now the question is what's the measure of this segment x? Now pause this video right now and see if you can answer this question because I will show you the solution in 3, 2, 1. Alright, so given this figure, the goal is to find the length of this segment x. And of course, to answer this kind of question, what we're going to do is to complete this semicircle to create a whole circle like this. And now what we're going to do is to expand this segment measures 21 units like this. And now notice that this is a right angle. So if we draw the third side to create a triangle, we created a right triangle. Therefore, this hypotenuse is simply the diameter of this circle. Now at this point, Let's call this segment be equal to y. Why not? You can use n, you can use a, whatever you want. And now we know that the radius of this circle must be equal to 10 plus x. And now, we have here a right triangle. We know its side. We have here 16, 21 plus y, and 20 plus 2x. Therefore, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. So we have here 16 squared plus 21 plus y raised to the power of 2 equals the hypotenuse squared 20 plus 2x raised to the power of 2. Now we have an equation but in this equation we have two variables and to solve these two variables we need to add another equation that consists of x and y. So since we have two variables we need two equations to answer or to find the values of those variables. Now the question is what is the other equation that consists of x and y. Now let's have this figure. Using chord chord power theorem, so if we have two chord intersect inside the circle and let's have these two chords, this one and the diameter of this circle, multiply both parts of the chords together then set them equal. So in this figure, we can say that segment yw multiplied by segment yn equals the product of segment IY and YD. So using this, we can say that X multiplied by 20 plus X equals 21 times Y. Now we have two equations in terms of X and Y, so we can now solve for the values of X and Y. So let's focus on this result. Now let's have the second equation. Now let's simplify this. Multiply x to 20 plus x. This will give us 20x plus x squared equals 21y. Now let's get the second equation. And what we're going to do is to square these terms. So we have here 256. We have 16 squared. Now square 21 plus y raised to the power of 2. We get 441 plus 42y plus y squared. And expand 20 plus 2x raised to the power of 2. We have 400 plus 80x plus 4x squared. Now let's focus on this term, 80x plus 4x squared. If we factor out 4, we get 20x plus x squared. And the rest is bring down. Why we do that? Because here, the first equation says 20x plus x squared equals 21y. So we can replace this term with 21y. Now we get 4 times 21y. Now as you can see, we don't have any variable x in this equation. So we can now solve for the value of y. So let's do that. Simplifying those equations, this will give us 256 plus 441. This will give us 697. Now bring down 42y plus y squared. And then 4 times 21y, we have 84y. Now combine like terms. We have here y squared. Subtract 84y on both sides. So we have negative 42y. And 697 minus 400, we have positive 297 equals 0. Now from here, this is not hard to factor because if we factor this out, we get y minus 9 multiplied by y minus 33. 
n since it is equal to 0 using the 0 property, we can say that y equals 9 or y equals 33. This is both accepted because y is a side length and y must be a positive number. So we have two cases, y equals 9 and y equals 33. Now, we want the value of x and not the value of y. So we have x squared plus 20x equals 21 times 9 because y equals 9. And on the other case, we have x squared plus 20x equals 21 times 33. Now let's solve for the value of x. So this will give us 21 times 9 is 189 equate this to 0 and then this is not hard to factor because 189 is also equal to 27 times 7 so we have x plus 27 times x minus 7 equals 0 we can say that x equals negative 27 or x equals 7 now x cannot be a negative number because x is a side length so x equals 27 is not part of our solution x equals 7 is part of our solution. Now, how about on the second case? 21 times 33, this will give us 693. Equate this to 0. Now, this is not factorable, unfortunately. But we can use the quadratic formula. And if we use the quadratic formula, we get that the value of x equals negative 10 plus or minus square root of 793. Now, approximately x is approximately equal to negative 38.16 or simply this is negative 10 minus square root of 793. Now the other value of x is approximately equal to 18.16 which is negative 10 plus square root of 793. Again, 18.16 is accepted but negative 38.16 is not accepted. So we found two possible values for x. Now the question why do we get two possible values of x? Because in this kind of situation, technically, we have two possible scenarios. So here's the first one. The first case, which is x equals 7. It, the position of 16 and 21 is in this position. So this is the first case, x equals 7. This is correct. Now in the second case, if we have this kind of position, we get that x is approximately equal to 18.16 units. So, this is the two cases in this question. Therefore, we get two possible values of x. x equals 7 or x equals approximately equal to 18.16 units. And as always, we are done.